Hello and welcome back to Butcher That Model. And this week we're going to be looking at water effects. Not your posh water effects. We're going to do it on the cheap. So let's see who's in the chat. Let me just turn the, turn the chat off on the YouTube. We're using StreamYard and the chat's a bit. It's the only thing wrong I find with StreamYard. I've got like the chat, so I've got YouTube up on the other screen. So who have we got in the moment? Six people watching. Oh, I know. First one in was, I'm just going to scroll up. Your dad. Dad's in. Happy Father's Day, Dad, for Sunday. And you're welcome. It was Scott. Scott made me do it. He's a bigger boy. He made me, he made me join in and then he ran away. You know what he's like. I'm not going to argue with him. And then that was it. Hello, Nat. Nat. Now, please. People in the chat, please don't use any bad language or profanities because that's too little as might be watching. I know they like to watch occasionally. I don't know why. I don't know why they like to watch us loonies, but there you go. They do like to watch occasionally, so please try not to swear in the chat. I'll try my hardest not to swear on here, although it is hard sometimes. Who else is in? Who have we got? Andy's in, Mother Making Mayhem. Oh, Andy, thank you for dumping in, mate. And then uh, do, 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 a bit of chat between us. Well. Hmm. Shane's in. Shane Young. Afternoon, Shane. Yeah, everybody's fine here, mate. We've been out this, this morning, we had a little wander in the town. Me and Tommy had to get some supplies for the man cave. Biscuits and crisps and important stuff. And then stuff I need for today, obviously. Bits and pieces that we need to create some water effects on the cheap. Now, when I say on the cheap, I mean cheap. We're looking at about a pound a go ish. That cheap. So, which one should we start with? Should we start with the easiest one, the one that children could do safely? What we're going to use? We're going to use that. Obviously, need something to sit it on. We're going to use a photo frame. This is a pack of two from a pound shop, and it was literally two for a quid. You don't need this bit, so what we'll do is we'll just remove that bit and then we'll throw it away. Unless you want to paint it garish colours and use it, you know, you could use that. Let's just have a little move. You could use it as a tie, I suppose. Just throw it away. You don't need it. Let's pop it back down again now. So, let's put it in there. We don't need that. Right, so we want to unclip it. And what we want to do, we want to plug in the hot glue gun because we want to be able to seal this just in case because things can leak through and under and then leak out. It's not so bad with this technique, but if we're using resin, it's just a good habit, good, you know, getting the habit of sealing the base just to avoid incidents and accidents that you don't want, basically. So we'll take it out. We don't need the glass, so we'll put that one to one side and we'll dispose of that safely later on. We don't need a bit of paper and we don't need point the clip. There you go, Fox, I did a point. There you go. Right. So we'll plug in the octagon. Oh, actually, I did do. Hey, I'm better prepared than I thought it was. This is going to be extremely hot. Now, I'm going to use it in my little one. It's only got a short wire, so I'm going to sit here with the extension lead on my knee. This is a very cheap, literally a very cheap one from a pound shop that was actually more than a pound. Trace descriptions, but never mind. So all you're going to do is we're going to run. Let's stick another one in there. We're just going to run a little bead of hot glue, literally just round it. Oh, Catching on that, there. And then set it in, screw him down, turn the hot glue gun off. I'm just not seeing it flying. Turn that off, put that somewhere safe to cool down, and then clip him down. 
And what that will do is that I'll just stop whatever unit you're going to use here from seeping out of the bottom. You don't want that. You don't want seepage. It's the last thing you want. Trust me on this. Speaking from experience, you don't want it to seep out of the bottom. Right. So we'll leave that for a second too. Well, I've got pop glue on my bench. This thing I've got here. If you're in the UK and you're doing messy work, like I've been doing these last few days, get yourself one of these from Wilkinson's. It's called a Let's Create Messy Board. And it's in the art section. It's like an A2 size, just piece of clear plastic. It's great. It's fantastic. Protect your cutting mat. I'm not cutting, I'm painting. Why wouldn't I spend two quid on a little plastic mat? Unless you pull. Unless you pull, then it doesn't matter. Because you cut it much your palette anyway. It's Picasso palette. But they're great. Absolutely fantastic. Um, this video is not sponsored in any way, shape, or form by Wilkinson's. I just like it. I think it's a good idea. So get yourself one of them. All right, now that's set up now. Trim off any little bit of glue that's poked out. What's the next thing we're going to need? All purpose wall filler. It's great stuff. This is fantastic stuff. It was a pound from Poundland. So, so far, it's cost us a pound for two frames and a pound for that. But I'm not going to use all that. I'm only using one frame. That's 50p. I'm probably going to use about 50 pairs worth of 50, oh, not even 50 pence worth of filler. I'm not going to use half of it, am I? I'm going to use a bit of it. So, what are you going to do? This is a new one. Fresh this morning. I'll get off, pop him out. Lean over, pop that in the bin. It's quite messy. This. So you might want to put on one of these. Just put on a put on a bit of a glove. Just pop a glove on. It get totally messy, do you? Ah, uh, right. And what you're going to do is you literally slap it on. Now, what you could have done, and what I've done on the other one, I'm not going to use this. This is just a, I'm just going to show you and let it dry straight away, basically. What I've done on the other one, I'll show you later on. I've taped, used masking tape, went around the edge. I'm getting ahead of myself, see? I use masking tape, tape around the edge, and it just keeps it clean. Because this is a bit messy. In fact, you know what? Should we do it? Nah. nah. Now you'll see in a minute. Because in true Blue Peter style, there's one I prepared earlier. Because this is going to take about, well, overnight, basically, to dry. So it's not a quick job. The next one we're going to do, that's a quick job. This is an overnight, let it dry, let it cure sort of thing. You don't want to worry too much about getting waves in there at the moment. All you want to do is get it covered. So we'll just slap it on. Now, I've literally probably used an eighth of that. So, my one pound worth of filler is going to last quite a bit as long as you keep it well sealed. Don't let it dry out, otherwise, you're just going to have a solid little lump after a couple of days. You don't want that. Right. So, now we've got it covered. We don't need that anymore. Get it off the edge. You can just neaten up like that. But later on, you're going to paint it. So if you just mask off the edge of it, it just makes it a bit easier. Right. Now what we're going to do. We're going to try and make it look like waves. Now. The white balance is, is using white is not very good on a YouTube video because obviously it's hard to see. That's actually got 
weight structure in it already just by using my fingers but we want it to look a bit more refined than that so you want a specialist tool one specialist tool a plastic spoon and what you're going to do if you look at look at the sea the sea's not flat the waves aren't uniform the waves are totally random there's a lot of troughs a lot of bowls and a spoon's a great way of achieving it what you want to do first before you attack it with a spoon you want a little bit of water and you want to just just wet the surface a little bit you don't go mad that's literally four or five drops of water now has anybody seen floor screeders concrete floors you ever seen people doing concrete floors they lay the concrete down they pull the concrete down and they'll tamp it and the other machine that's like a big power flow it's like four float blades around in a circle and they literally go over the top of the wet concrete and it produces what they call the fat which is a very watered down layer and about two or three millimeters thick when it dries and they call that the fat and that's what we want to try and do we want to try and turn the top of this into like the fat and that will give us a very fine material to work with really because it's, it's actually quite coarse you won't believe how coarse wall filler is so just add a bit of water and what you want to do is you literally want to start speckling it just tap, tapping it put your spoon in and create little troughs and bowls as you're speckling it and then then what you want to do is just totally random and you'll see in a minute it will start to dry out a little bit and the back of the spoon will start lifting and creating a wave effect it really is this simple all it is a plastic spoon and five minutes of just working out now, it's not very apparent at the moment because it's white but once you paint it and then dry brush it you'll start to see all the all the wave peaks that you're forming and the troughs push too deep you'll put a hole in it don't worry it's still wet enough to move it about now you see now it's just starting to get the stage where it's starting to peak up you see that so it's just starting now to now that to me i think that's just about about right depends on the scale that you're working on now if you follow me on facebook a couple of days ago bizarrely two years ago i did a very small one two thousand scale hmh hood which fit on a photo frame this big and i did this very technique so there is a, a full video on the youtubes of me actually doing this so put that on one side put a spoon away and let's get rid of that right so what you want to do now is you're at the stage now where you're gonna to have to leave it overnight literally leave it overnight so we'll pretend it's overnight we'll have a little chat who's in anybody else coming yet any seven watching scott's in hey afternoon scott dad sussed out he sussed out he's got i had to fess up it was us what did it scott sorry mate he made me do it he made me fess up See, this board's great. Love it. Let's have a quick drink. This isn't a brandy. I don't drink brandy. I do like whiskey, but it's not a whiskey. I'm actually trying to be. I'm trying to be good. I'm not drinking fat. I'm not drinking stuff that's going to make me fatty because I need to lose some weight a little bit. I'm getting a bit of a belly. So I've been ever so good. I'm not under fizzy. I'm actually on pure apple juice. See, I'm being good. I'm trying to be good. I'm not working medium. I'm trying to be good. I had a chocolate biscuit earlier, very naughty. 
Oh, right. Now, in true Blue Peter style, here's one I prepared earlier. And I did it properly. I masked this one. I remember to mask it. So what you want to do now, after you've painted it and it's dried, you see how it's got there? become even more apparent when you dry brush it. So we want some white. Oh, let's find some white paint. Oh, I found some white paint. No, 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 no. Do not use this to make dioramas with. It's far too expensive. What you want is you want to get yourself a little wet, your dry palette. And you want, oh, where to put it? I sort of joking, I saw I'm organized, I put it there. Crawford and Black acrylic paint from the works. That's all you need. I thought that's just one. Oh, look, it's sealed. Brand new look. It's one of the things me and Tommy went to town for to get today. You could use, quite easily, you could spend a pound at Wilkinson's or B&Q or Home Base and buy a tester pot of emulsion paint. The stuff you paint your living room with. It's just as good. And it's a quid for them tester pots. Well, most places are a quid. Right, so let's give that an open. Squidge a bit in there, and we only need a bit. Not far too much, actually. See if that's going to last me a long, long time. Because I only use a little bit of time now. Dry brush. I want a dry brush. I want a nice dry brush. Yeah. Dry brushing, you want a soft, very soft, very, very soft. A soft and fluffy. That's obviously really nice. Soft and fluffy. You don't want a hard bristle brush. You want a very soft bristle brush. And you want it dry. Now, whenever you're dry brushing, never, ever, ever, never, 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 never. Drop your dry brush in the water to wash your paint off. Never do it. Never do it. Just defeats the whole object. You end up wet bushing. You don't want that. We need some kitchen roll or toilet tissue. Whatever. Don't matter. I prefer these big old rolls of kitchen roll from a supermarket. A few quid. They last me a few weeks. They do. They do the job. The only problem is they're white as well. That's going to start the white balance even more. White paint, white, white, yeah, sorry. Right. So, dip your brush in the paint. Scrape off the excess. And you want it on the edge. And then what you want to do, rub it on the towel. And you're basically taking as much as you can off. All right. So you end up looking like that, and that's even that's a bit much. So we'll give it another another rub. Very very gently, start flicking the brush over the top, and it would take three or four goes with loading the brush and doing it again, and loading the brush and do it again before you actually start to see what's happening but you've got to be very very gentle all right don't you know the bush you know you're not doing that you're flicking really really gently and what that's going to do the paint pigment that's left in the bristles is going to get caught on the raised areas and stick to it and you're just building up and building up and build it up very very slowly one thing you can't rush is dry brushing and it's the biggest mistake people make when they're dry brushing is they'll whack a load of paint on the brush they'll they'll, they'll rub it off two or three times and then they'll and you're putting too much on it's a very slow and patient technique to get the best results from it all right Well, that's just once I've loaded this brush and it's hardly noticeable at the moment. 
but we'll keep at it. Let's keep at it. Nice and gently. Just right, keep working away. It's boring, isn't it? I don't. I find it quite therapeutic. It seems like a bush. I quite like it. It's one of my favourite techniques. All right. But then don't go in one direction. Change the angle a little bit when you're working on something like that, and you'll catch every single angle then. And that's what you want to do because when you look at waves, they are totally random. They may form a sort of pattern where you get one lot of waves and a lot behind it. But they're not straight, they're bent, they're curved, they're warped, they're up, they're down. It's just total and utter randomness. It's pure chaos. I do I enjoy doing what effects so much because they are pure chaos. And you have to embrace the chaos, basically, to get the most out of it. And that's the good thing with the spoon technique that I just did. I've just shown you. You can't really control it. It's totally, totally random. Right. Now, I'm ready to put a bit more paint on my brush. Like I said, the worst thing you can do is put that in your water like you would normally and give it a swirl about and then try and dry it off. You will just ruin everything you've just done. And I think that's another thing that people, another mistake people have been making when the dry brush in minutes isn't like because they're constantly wetting the brush don't do it don't even when you change colors there is such a tiny tiny amount of white pigment on that it makes no difference whatsoever when you put another color on and start dry brushing all right tiny 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 so yes that sorry darling it was i'm not reading the chat am I? it was a tester pot look it was that one a wilkinson's and this one is called after hours yeah after hours yeah. Oh, yeah very nice yeah it's just a wilkinson's tester pot well, that's all for a pound a whole pound i really need to concentrate on chat more don't i sorry all right so anyway load the bush up again a little bit on get as much as you can off and then on your tissue and then really go to town what the tissue is actually doing as well as taking the paint off it's taking the moisture out of the paint as well and you really only want to leave you're trying to leave pigment only trapped between the bristles you're trying to paint with pigment you're not trying to paint with medium and pigment all right so and again there's a bit on there not a lot a little bit more than it should be. I'm trying to, I'm trying to show you. All right, so we'll carry on working it. Work it, work it, baby. The more you do it, the better this starts to look. And now it's starting to show the effect. Change the angle, going again. It's a bit noisy outside, sorry. It's kids playing. It's gorgeous here. I'm sat here in shorts and a t-shirt. It's about a million degrees in here. I understand now why Ted was suffering last night. <laughs> it's, it's roasting up here. And the kids are all out playing. But do you know what? There's one thing I like. I enjoy the sound of children playing in the background. There's nothing better. It really isn't anything better than the sound of children apart from when they're swearing and fighting and trying to kill each other slightly different then but kids are actually playing i think it's a fantastic sound all right so that's that one done now we're going to do one more thing and that's Work out the cost of that. Should we work out how much that's cost to do a water effect like that? 50p, 
that's probably less than a pound's worth of material there and you can put whatever you wanted on that All right. the way i do it if i when i did hms hood i got the kit and i i got some uh grease with paper i laid the the foundation of the the seabed down the sea down and then i pushed the kit into it wrapped in grease with paper left the impression that left it there I actually sculpted a little bit with the, the, the waves hitting the bow and then going backwards and then just took it out and left it to dry and then did the painting and then just sat the ship inside the, the, the space the recess that it made and it, I've chuffed a bit with it really chuffed a bit but that's how to do a really really simple child friendly water effect for pennies literally pennies Oh Connor, and I'm like, I was, I'm looking at the chat as well, mate. But you could do that, couldn't you? You could do that, Connor. Easy, mate. Easy peasy, that is. So you might have to get a ship. Dad's been building a ship, hasn't he? Yeah, Dad's been building a ship. Connor might like to try a ship soon. Yeah. There you go. And you can refer back to this video of Connor and see how to do it, can't you? Or the other one, the one that's got the ship on it already. And that's how you do. Can we strip it off? I say that seriously, it's that simple to do a cheap, realistic water effect for dioramas. And then all you do is just peel off your mask. And it was literally a sister, a sister frame for the one I did earlier because it was two for a pound. In Poundland, you cannot go wrong. When we're nice to it later tried it with the edges but it's that simple why would you not have a go feel that away i love working i love doing water effects great good fun good fun now the next one we're going to do in a minute we'll have a chat we'll have a look at chat on that and see who's talking and who's doing what the next one isn't advisable to let small children do it because of the materials that we're going to be using they are extremely toxic extremely pongy and if you get them on your fingers they're not very nice to get off so this is not recommended this next one for children but this one is all right Connor this one so stick that there is it just connor watching or is little miss giggles watching as well now is little miss giggles watching as well is she yeah build a big boat that daddy don't do it to start with or build a small boat but a little boat there's nothing to stop you building a little boat that one i got down i'll show i'll put i'll put pictures of it up later is hms sword and it's like this big tiny tiny but it was fun to make it was really fun to make it had about nine or ten parts that's all it was connor but it came out really cool really really cool and then you can progress on that you don't have to do dirty great big things just connor today oh Oh, oh, CBBs, eh? So CBBs are better than me. Okay, Paige. I'll remember that, madam. Little madam, little miss. Miss Giggles. I know when I'm wanted. And CBBs wins. Right, should we have a... Let's get rid of that. Have a look at chat. Who's doing what then? Uh, not a lot going on. Oh, I'm seven watching. Oh, okay. Not many of you watching. Never mind. Anybody got any questions on that one? Any of you? No? No questions? Right, we'll get on with the other one then, shall we? Now, the other one is a bit of a continuation from last week. Last week we made trees and we made large woody herbs. We made palm trees. Or made a palm tree, or the beginning of one. This 
I've done a little bit of work on this one already. I've got the base down. I've used uh, what do you use? Air clay. That's air clay. I had, a, had a, bit of a brain moment then. And I had some spare velociraptors. I've still got a couple of spare raptors here. I had some spare velociraptors, so I thought, you know what? We'll make a little diorama out of it all. So here are palm trees. Now I said about the cocoa nut, the cocoa fiber mattings that you get for hanging baskets. That's what that is. It's just chopped up and then just glued on with some PVA and left to dry. And the top is just modeled as lichen. You know the bags of lichen you get? Just pocket in the middle. It's that simple. And I, re I reckon they are better than trees you can buy. Making them yourself. And all I've done is I've just stuck a couple of raptors on there. Because why not? Dinosaurs. <laughs> Dinosaurs. I went to George Mal, then I've been watching this too much Peppa Pig with my grandchildren. Dinosaurs. <laughs> right, so we're going to turn this into a bit of a a bit of a beach scene where two young raptors have come down. It's the first time they oh, what's this? It's a big bit of water. You know. But we're going to use some quite adulty techniques now, Connor. All right. You can do this when you're a bigger boy, not at the moment. We're going to use hey, let me go. We're going to use there. I'm organized, see? We're going to use two-part epoxy resin. Now this stuff dries in five minutes. It's extremely nasty, stinky, but good for this job. It's very stinky stuff. All right. So what we're gonna do is Once I get it open. Once I get it open. No, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna give that another drive in a bit. And we'll put it down on that. Oh, this is curious. We're gonna need one or two. We're also gonna need some sort of coloration. Now, for preference, I prefer inks or washes sit there washes is that going to come out of there again or do i just not just cut him out we'll just cut him out or ever not cut him up oh well, thank you Nat. i have i have had a bit of practice at making trees i've made a few for friends of mine for their model railways and things like that which is why when the suggestion came to make trees, it was like, oh, no, not trees again. Please, no more trees. All right, so let's get that out of there. Right. It's all Dad's fault. I'm sure Dad was the one that suggested trees. Right, we're going to need a sturdy stick. Just a crafter's lollipop stick from your local craft shop you get a big bag of them for a quid and we're going to need some sort of blue or green dye now the thing is with this you've got to be really really careful a tiny tiny bit of this will go a long long way this is just a citadel blue wash a very old citadel blue wash and the amount we need is literally let me get a monkey brush because i'm not Get a monkey bush on a job. Literally, you're going to get about that much. I've literally painted a tiny bit of blue ink in the bottom of that cup. And you'll see just how much that tints. Spot that there. Right now, the stinky time starts. You've got to snap that end off. And then squeeze it in. Now you've only got literally five minutes working time with this. So you squeeze it in, make sure both have gone because you need the correct amount of each agent. 
and then we're going to get our stirring stick and stir and stir and stir. Keep stirring, you've got to get it stirred. And what you'll find is the blue will mix all the way through. Now you see how blue that tiny, tiny amount of blue ink has turned that. You literally need. Right, what you want to do then is you want to pour it where you want it. And then literally let it find its own level. Pour it all out. This stuff stinks. You need to do this in the outside of a very, very well ventilated room. Not a room that's at about 110 degrees. I'm tiny. Let's just scrape it all out. Now, like I said, you've only got like a five minute working time with this stuff. When it starts to go off, you've got even less time to work it. All right, so let's get it up to the edge. Now, after a few minutes, this will start to harden. And this is when you want to start doing this. You want to use your little lolly stick and you literally want to start agitating it. It will help the mixing and it'll help it cure. But you'll also be quick enough to get waves in it before it goes rock hard. I'll do it closer to the camera. Before it starts to go rock hard. You don't want it going rock hard on you until you've got it where you want it. I know you want it. Let's push it up to there. And the same thing to see is random. Waves will come in in lines, but in a random waveform. It might be curved, it might be. We'll leave it another minute or two. And it will start to get very hot as it cures, which is another reason you don't want children to do it, because it gets on their hands, it will burn as well, this stuff. It's nasty, nasty stuff. I should be wearing gloves, really. I'm an idiot. Kind of don't be like Dave. Dave's an idiot. All right? When you're a bigger boy and you're doing this sort of thing, wear gloves. You don't want this on your skin whatsoever. It will burn. It will stick. It will take ages to get off. And you won't be an happy chappy. None of you will. You get this on you. Right, you see how it's just starting to harden up now? Now this is where I've got to work it. All right? And work some ways into it. You haven't got very long at all when this starts to happen. You've got to go for it. And it's gone. It's virtually unworkable now. That quick. That's how quick it goes off. But it's given us... A nice wave effect. See? And then we've got to leave that now. For a little bit. And we'll leave that to go off. And then we can do a dry brushing technique on top of that as well. Just a tiny little bit on the, on the peaks. That was quick, wasn't it? Come on, we're going 40 minutes. Oh, right then. Oh, stinky stuff. That is stinky stuff. It's good stuff, but it's stinky stuff. And because I'd already pre sealed this, none of it's gone through. And raptors have finally discovered the sea for the first time in their young lives, and it's like, what the heck is this thing? But you see how simple it is. People are terrified, terrified doing water effects. I know one of our friends, one of our YouTube colleagues, has been a little bit offish on doing these water effects, but it really is simple to do. 
and hopefully the person comes over and will see this and say, you know what? It's not that bad, is it? It's not terrifying. And you can make some cracking effects. There is another technique we can use where you're making ice. Now, I, I for ages, weeks and weeks and weeks, I thought, how am I going to make ice? How am I going to do? How am I going to do ice? And then I thought, you idiot, it's easy. Let me go and get you this. I'll show you this. I did the whole set. I knew about helicopters. Helicopters. Oh, my bells. They were very cheap. They were like 10 or 11 quid each. And I thought, oh, do you know what? I'll do the whole set. But I did this one. As a winter scene. The actual helicopter, the markings of the helicopter, it was based in Germany in the early 2000s. So I was like, you know what I'll do? Let's do it like a, an Alp, saying it's flying across the Alps. Do a waterfall. Dad, there's a waterfall. There's a waterfall, Dad. It's a frozen waterfall. Oh, do you know what? I'm trying to think. Can I do a quick waterfall? Have I got something we can use? I don't think I have actually. The technique for doing a waterfall. Should we do that next week? Should we? But that's ice. All that is is hot glue. It's that simple. It's just hot glue. It's kind of a bit brownish over there. It's been that's nearly two years old. That it's kind of a bit brownish on the. I used, like an idiot, I shouldn't have done it, I used the Christmas snow spray, and it's yellowed all the time, I don't know to sort that out, but frozen water is literally, you just use hot glue, and you can make a frozen water effect. The other thing you can do is, if you lay down a piece of greaseproof paper, and this stuff added a tiny a little bit less blue than i did for that one that's actually turning a bit green now and then spread it out using a, a lolly stick very thin and then leave it to leave it a couple of days you could actually hit it with a hammer and it'd be like toffee it would just shatter like like you would do like a, a block of toffee and then you can use that for for ice effects on a day of armor, you could have a tank crossing a small stream in the winter and then just put that when you pour your resin, then lay the the ice sheet, the ice pieces over the top of it. And that gives the effect that the tank's gone through the, the frozen river and cracked the ice and there's water underneath it. It's a really, I, I saw, somebody, saw somebody doing that a couple of years ago. I thought, you know what, I'm going to do that one day. I'm going to have a crack at that. I still haven't, but I will do. I don't know, I'm just going to mess around with this. I'm going to give this another little dry bush. Remember where I put the white paint? Oh, there it is. Put it up there. Put it on the windsill. I've taken that other dinosaur diorama downstairs because I had. I did a waterfall on that. I'm trying to think what else I did. I've got nothing in this in the man cave. The rest of it's in the where my spray booth is with water effects. Sorry. I didn't realise it was gonna be that quick. I could do it that quick. I thought, oh it's gonna be a good at least a good hour to do these, but no, no, really simple. Too quick. So yeah, I'm gonna give this another little dry bush while we have a look at the chat. You know what, Dad? Because there's, there's actually a, a way of combining the hot glue and resin. I've got glue. I know, I've got a, a two-part resin and I've got a hot glue gun. Next week, tune in next week when I'll show you how to create a waterfall. Is that all right? Will that be 
Anybody interested in doing in seeing that? And that's it. All right, and that. Just for Dad, Nat, and Connor, next week we're doing a waterfall. In fact, next week, you know what? We'll do two. We'll do a waterfall and a frozen waterfall. So that will be next week's. I'm going to have to get some stones. I'm going to have to, I've got a shopping list going around in my head now. I need this. I'm going to have to get that. I need some of that. We'll do that. We'll do a couple of nice little diorama effects. Waterfalls. We'll do a waterfall and we'll do a frozen waterfall. All right. And icicles and things like that. We'll show you how to do icicles and things dripping off. I'm just gonna... The more you work at this, see how it's standing out now. Let it dry. Give it another, give it another go. Easy peasies, easy peasy stuff. Right, Connor. What you need to do now, you need to get on at Mummy. And that rascal of a daddy of yours, that rascal. And you need to say, we need to go to Poundland. And we need to buy some all papers, 151 all papers filler. And a couple of cheap picture frames. And then take me to the works and we'll buy some blue paint or to Wilkinson's or B&Q for a tester pot. And have a go. And I reckon if you had, if, if Connor can do it, there's no excuse for you lot not to do it. The cottage you showed on your first live stream is that in a is that as a video? No, no, it's not. I'm afraid that was that's done for actual gaming, D and D gaming. It was that you couldn't. I couldn't really do that as a video. I could do it as a video series. I could build a cottage or farm. Uh, a phone board if you want. Do you want me to do that as well? Because that's the sort of thing. You could use it for dioramas. You could put nothing to stop you putting a tank next to that medieval cottage I built, or you could use it for gaming purposes. Dad. Dad. I'll build a cottage as well. So next week, next week we're going to do waterfalls and water effects. All right. And then we'll build a, oh, we'll build a cottage. So you have to do roofing. I'll do it as a series. I will. I'll do it as a series, Matt. We'll do a couple of lives on it, but I'll I'll be recording it for. I'll be doing stuff with pigeons. Yes, Dad, with pigeons. Yes. Do you know I've got some pigeons? Did 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 I tell you the story of the pigeons? Yeah, I have some pigeons. I will get revenge for the pigeons, Mr. Mountain. Don't you don't you worry about that. There will be pigeon revenge. Scott's Haddies. I revenged Mr. Sutherland. Yours is coming, mate. Don't you worry. The pigeons, they sent me three boxes. It was Dad, Kenneth and Scott. Chipped in and bought me a box each. So I ended up with three boxes of pigeons. It was about 108 pigeons or something I've ended up with. And what am I supposed to do with 108 pigeons apart from Mecca C from the Hitchcock's The Birds? What am I supposed to do with that? Madness. Madness. Right. So that's now. I reckon that's. I'm quite happy with that. Does it look like the sea? Does it look like a water effect? Do you, does it look infected? Do you? I'm quite happy with that. Happy, happy. I'll put that to one side. Let's have a look at the raptors. It's gone a bit greenish, actually. That's fine. That's fine. And then we'll just give that a bit of a... A bit of a flick of the dry bush. Trying to smack the raptors while I'm doing it. That instantly, because it's tinted clear resin. As soon as you put that white on it, that's instantly. You don't need to do a white lot, and you've created 
to see. And I'm going to put this to one side as far away from me as possible for the next 12 hours because it stinks. That resin. So please don't don't let young children. That most it has it's some dad. It's some. Right, I'm just going to put. I don't need that anymore. So I'll put that in there. Put that in there. I'll put white paint on my hands. Thank you, Connor. You can do it, Connor. You could do that. It's so so simple. It's easy peasies. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Right, and it's very safe. Very safe for children to do that. Wall filler method. There's nothing nasty or toxic in wall filler. Well, there's that resin. He's a no 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 no. Right, you're very good health. I'll have some orange juice, apple juice. Ah. Uh. Right then. Just, I've, I've been doing this with Ted. I got a bit further. Ted. Ted, whatever you do, make sure you put the body of the fella in before you put this panel. I've got to redo that. That slipped. Yeah. I had to take this entire panel off. I was an idiot. I, I put this together thinking I could just slide him in. No, you've got to get his body in first before you put this panel on the front of it, Ted. Don't don't be an idiot. Don't be like Dave. I'll fix that later. See, I make these mistakes, then Ted doesn't have to. Oh, I was an idiot. I didn't even think about it. I thought oh, he's, he could fit in there easy. No. Because the steering wheel's in the way. So got my team in. Right, should we look at the chat before we. <laughs> I'm after coffee stuff. Where's that? Where's that gone? I made one already, Dad. I made it out of foam. See, I knew that was going to be fat on that. Hang on a minute, we'll do that. We'll stick that on there, and then we'll stick. There we go. It's a Dungeons and Dragons diorama. It's a block on a raft. There you go. Oh, right. That's going to be used in the game in a couple of weeks' time. That the kids know nothing about. That's the thing with D&D, &D, you can do whatever you like. It's great. I'll just clean up the edge of that later on, turn that tape off there. And I'll put some pictures up in... Oh, hello, Lynn, you've just in time for me to say, that's it really, I've got nothing else to do now. Ah, oh, well. I made stickers for Mike Skinner making so for you and us. Very nice. Well done, Andy. I see that's what I like about this modern community of ours. We all love each other, it's great. Fantastic. Anyway, I hope you find that interesting and informative. And next week, like I said, we'll do some we'll do some waterfalls next week then. I'm gonna to have to come up with some materials. And, uh, nothing too drastic. We'll just do something simple. Nothing huge. And, uh, that's about two, aren't I? Oh well, waterfalls it is then. So thanks for watching, everybody. Thank you very much to to the mods, my moddies, to Lynn who's just finally turned up, and Dad and Matt for keeping you all. And thank you all for not not using naughty words and swearing in the chat thank you all for that i appreciate that a lot and i'm sure nat does so next week waterfalls whatever you do wash your hands and you know wash your bits you filthy animals keep safe and i'll see you next week for waterfalls thanks bye bye how do you turn this thing off again i can't remember now i've got to find the oh there it is right i'm going